Blanket Marketing presents Brought In On Business. This is Money 2.0. Welcome back to Brought In On Business. If you're just now listening in, the top of the show, we had Christine Calvin on from Comstock Magazine. She is the editor and talked about the magazine and how it's been propelling this region for the last 20 years plus. And so now I'm really excited. We have here Greg Bauer, president and CEO of Rack and Road, Park and Bike, and Bauer 360. Greg, how are you? Mike, I'm doing great. I'm looking forward to some great questions. Great. So now we can jump in. So, Greg, you say on your website that you believe you need to fall and fall hard to get up and do it better. Can you give us an example of a time when you felt something didn't go as planned and you needed to like recreate a new strategy and approach in order to succeed or, or do it better? So, Mike, do you want the top 20 or the top 10? Let's go with the top 50. <laughs> How about the okay. <laughs> All right. So probably, uh, I'll just tell you the one that, that probably changed my life. Um, I call it sales for sales sake is bad business. And for most people, most small companies that I know, including myself, for many, many years, we all pretty much drove ourselves to say we did 1 million, we did 1.5, we did 2 million. And I'm here to tell you a story to say that sometimes saying no to the sale is the most profitable thing that you can do. So Rack and Road is, is one of the businesses I've had. By the way, I do believe in the magic number of three, three children, three businesses, but only one wife, Mike. <laughs> and only one radio show. <laughs> and only one. Brought the no best. business. <laughs> <laughs> so anyways, I was saying that, okay, in Rack and Road, we've been in business for 22 years. Uh, we've got stores up and down the western United States, Seattle, Costa Mesa, Salt Lake City, the Bay Area, and our corporate headquarters are here in Sacramento. So growth was something that we understood how to do. We had pro formas that ran out five years to show how we were going to be a $35 million a year business. We had what we considered every backup plan in place, but we really didn't realize is that probably right when the country was just ready to be Y2 compliant and 2000, 2001 hit and 2002 hit, and I had stores right in the middle of, I would say, the largest tech industries in the country. Sunnyvale, California, Douglas Ranch in Denver, Colorado. And overnight, almost overnight, we lost upwards of 35% of the sales in these markets. And I absolutely was shocked that how our pro forma and our sales growth and everything looks so great, but yet within three months, I was on the, uh, I'd say the verge of bankruptcy. Very, very difficult thing to go through. There's a lot of things that a CEO or president can do, and I can make very black and white decisions, which I would probably call even bigger mistakes, or I can reach out. And I, I do believe in the bubbling up of my employees. I believe in peers, and I believe in mentors. I uh, knew that Tower Records was going through some of the same issues with this move to digital. And so uh, I'm like, I'm in retail. They're in retail. I've got to grab someone from Tower and help me kind of get past this stuff. So... There was a great person. His name was Jim Bain. He worked for Tower for a very short amount of time. And I hired him to raise money for me. Yeah, what a great thing to do. Let's throw some more debt at something I couldn't solve, right? So Jim comes in, and he's working. He's trying to work with some bank relationships. He's an ex-banker. And one day he came to me, and I'll never forget it. He's, I, I've talk, so many things that I've learned is from Jim, and I'll talk about a few more of them in a little bit. He said to me, Greg, the biggest mistake I can possibly do for you is to raise you this money you're looking for. And when he said that, I said, what do you mean? And he said, what you're trying to do right now is you've got however many stores you have, I think it was 16 at the time, you are chasing stores to try to, draw, to try to drive top line sales when what you really need to do is take a look at what you got you here today. Take a look at those top six stores. Put your energy there because sales for sales sake is a distraction to your business. So, you know, Yakum and Thule Car Rack said, hey, Greg, you need to be in Salt Lake City. It's a great market. Hey, Greg, you need to be in Denver, Colorado. It's a great market. Well, we had the sales, and I, I want to say I think we made Sacramento Magazine's 
uh, fastest growing companies and, you know, one through 25 for three years in a row. And I look back at it and I said, I think anybody who makes the fastest growing company in any magazine, good luck unless you've got a lot of VC money, right? So, you know, kind of going to what the biggest mistake was is to sit there and base my entire business model on a sale. Today, I operate eight stores. We s- sold some. We closed some. I licensed, did some license agreement with other, with other ones. Excuse me. And it was the best thing I do. I don't look at top line sales today. I look at gross profit dollars. I look at bottom uh, bottom line profitability. And today we operate. I'm going to say with about two thirds of sales, and the bottom line number is substantially higher as a percentage of growth than what it has ever been. And so I'm gonna say, if we kind of recap, what's the one thing that I really, really learned where I fell and I got back up is during that period of time, and I remember walking into an office and saying to, I wanna say it was Jim Bain, I'm done, I'm throwing in the towel, I can't do this anymore. And he said, I'm not gonna get you that loan, we're gonna go, we put together what we call Black Monday, we made great moves, we paid up our vendors, we kept our best employees, And I learned the biggest life lesson there is that sales for sales sake is not good business. That's awesome. You know, I mean, you know, being a a business owner myself, you know, oftentimes we do go out there and we're, we're chasing those sales and trying to get those sales and not really looking at how are you growing? Because there is something about growing too fast. There's something about growing too small. I'm sure, I mean, too slow. I'm sure you can agree, but it's being in that, that area where you reap the most profitability and staying there and being very successful. So you've made some great points here. So now I want to I want to talk about some of the digital stuff. I want to talk about Bauer 360. And so Bauer 360 focuses on um, helping organizations um, achieve their goals through new technology. What recent social media uh, campaign or communication platform has been most successful in helping your ch- clients achieve these goals? I think quite a few of them, but I, I'm going to kind of talk about social media. I have a tendency to back things up. Um, I, I, I spend way more time in what we call the war room um, of assess and deploy, strategy, beta testing. Um, and by the time I deploy and probably deploy three more times to make sure it's right. The team's focused and they're going the wrong direction. So when I think of digital strategy, the first thing I do is I get in the war room. We talk about what we're really trying to do. You know, there's there's tales such as, uh, there I should say there's stories such as long tail and short tail. Um, how do you uh, really target um, the audience that you want to? And I think one of the biggest mistakes you can do is to take a shotgun approach. You know, it's easy to send an email out to 10,000 people with a general message. It's hard to get on the phone to target your market. So in one of my businesses, let's call it um, private colleges, and make that phone call. We call it touches, Mike. And touches are way more than an email drop. Absolutely. They're phone calls. Um, they're you know, a very, very well-scripted email. Um, we can hide behind big, massive email pushes. But when we touch, and, and I'm going to tell you right now, in some of my businesses, we touch upwards of 1,000 people a day through Facebook, through Twitter, through uh, real, real focused email campaigns. And I'm just going to say it, the best thing we can possibly do is what we're all the most afraid of is pick up that phone and make that phone call. That's excellent. So... With that said, what was one of your most successful, effective, you know, campaigns using new media? Do you have a story on that? Uh, <laughs> I will say that, it again, we have to back it up a little bit more to the strategy. And uh, let's go to the rack and road stores. The most, I should say, the most failures and the get up and do it better happen there. The other, the other business, I, I, you know, 20 years as well, I've learned those great mistakes and be able to apply um, some of those to park a bike. But in Rack and Road, we had a situation, we had a lot of online players coming in, um, you know, buying words such as Yakima Racks, discounting, all these 
horrible things for our business. It was also right as the market started turning past 2001, was that 2007-ish, I yes. would say. For the second time since I started this business, we had a drop in sales. And when I say drop in sales, we run this thing so efficiently now that if I'm off a point in any key performance indicator, I'm shocked. Well, I was really shocked because our first sales, or I should say our, our gross profit um, variance report came out and we were down over 20%. So I called it a big brother program and that's what Sacramento Business Journal wrote it up as. Um, you might want to call it something different and my employees definitely didn't like it at all but through Bauer 360 we private labeled a call tracking software program and I decided you know you can hear your employees your 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 people on the floor you can hear your inside sales staff talk but what you can't hear is what your customer's saying on the other end and I will tell you uh, probably anything other than the sales for sales sakes story that this was one of the best things that we ever did. We used analytical data. We probably set up 10 to 15 questions that we were looking for the right answer. And what we realized in our business was not what the fault of the employee that was answering the phone did. It was the fault of upper management creating structures that didn't make sense to our ultimate goal, which was customer experience. We slightly compensate people for certain things that they do. And what we did is we compensated our managers to do almost anything but to answer the phone. So what we realized is that that customer experience, that value-added service so they don't choose Amazon over Rack and Road, that experience had to be portrayed because the first opportunity sometimes we have once we get this digital working and we get that that opportunity is that phone call. And I will I will say this and I'll say it again to any retailer here in Sacramento, in the region, in the state, that that first phone call with everything that's going on in this horribly competitive digital world is so critical to be able to have a customer or gain a customer for life. So if a customer was to call Mike, for example, and they said, um, where are you located? And my employee says, we're located at 2021 Arden Way. Well, they met the expectation. Well, here comes big brother Greg, you know, within two hours of that phone call coming and saying, well, what you basically told them is you're farther away than our other competitor. So you need to ask open-ended questions such as who, what, where, when, and why. Uh, maybe the question, I probably won't hit the who, what, where, when, and why, was, um, is there something I can check stock on for you? You now have a conversation with your customer, whereas before, they say thank you and realize you're 10 miles away versus five, and they never frequent your facility. I was in call tracking, locked in a room, and Runyon Salzman Einhorn, we did some digital strategy work with them for three months, and not only did I take our managers and have them take the first phone call. I measured footsteps, Mike. I realized that one quarter of our phone calls, of thousands and thousands of phone calls, were putting people on hold, forgetting about them, and going and look for a replacement part or a key. So I said, this is, this is not good. This is not good, we're down 20 plus percent. How are we gonna fix this problem? So it wasn't just about putting managers uh, in front of the customer first. It was about putting keys in front of phones. It was about shortening the distance to be able to pick something up. It was about saying, how do I take, I don't know, let's say one-sixth of our phone calls that never get answered. How do I, how do I solve this problem that that will never happen to a customer again? So here's where we're going to get in a digital mic. And, and I, it's... Maybe not the social media that we're going to talk about a little bit later, but this is the kind of things that we did. We initiated this call tracking. It was fantastic. The managers made more money. The employees made more money. The customer experience, which is always the most important, went through the roof. We created a tech center. It was like an air traffic control center where any store that was even close to busy, because as we know, guys can't multitask, and for whatever reason, the majority of my employees are guys, right? So 
I told them, if you have people in front of you, let it roll. In Sacramento, we have a room and we take over 6,000, 6,000 phone calls that would have went unanswered. And I don't teach them a lot about car racks. I don't teach them about uh, the Yakima receiver hitch bike rack that just came out. I teach them people skills. I teach them that the customer is the most important thing you could possibly do. So it's, you know, what are you looking for? Have you heard about us before? Um, you know, uh, you know, what I basically do is I can put someone behind in this, in this, what we call tech center, sales center, whatever you want to do, call it. And I can probably get them up to speed on a customer experience within three days to get them up to speed on how to actually sell a product will take a long time. So their entire goal was to answer this customer's questions and then direct them to someone with a little bit more knowledge. Another thing we looked at, I'm going to say about one fifth of the phone calls that we received were stores calling stores. And it was hard for me to measure because it was so bad. So what I did is I took Skype, you know, it's, it's a good technology tool. And I set up a group chat. And so if somebody was looking for a fit kit to uh, work on an Audi, instead of them calling six or seven different stores, we created a group chat and they would say, does anybody have a fit kit number one, two, three? And as soon as, as soon as the store saw that and responded to it, they took it into a private Skype and they took care of it. So we went from 22% down to 3% up in a matter of about three and a half months. And if you take a look at that, that's probably two to $3 million turn. So that's how I used, I would say more technology than media, which we right. will talk about. So, you know, I've had an opportunity to, to spend some time with you in your, in your, in your corporate office. And so I look at the people there, they're efficient, they're happy and they're working hard. And so you're running these three entities, um, as president and CEO, and you got to know a lot about leadership. What personality traits or characteristics do you believe makes a strong leader? Mike, I feel that a great leader allows their employees, especially the key employees, to personally grow. When I say that, the key employees are the ones that make my life easier and allow me to actually go out and go golfing with you, which we will do this summer, right? There we go. Okay. I, I, re, uh, you know, I, I, I have to go back and remember this day, and I, I remember it clearly. I was reviewing my position guide and discussing how important it was basically to have nothing on it. And you ask yourself, man, if you're the CEO, you're the president, whatever the heck you want to call yourself for that day, why are you doing so much? It was a life-changing day. When I operate on the business, meaning I've got a great staff that want nothing to do but to do a better job, I operate the business much more profitably than when I'm in the business. So really what I'm going to say is that it's all about the people. I and people ask me what I do. It's really hard to say, I own blank, blank, blank. What I really want to say is I hire great people. I, I love the people that work for me. I don't, Mike, you probably know it. I don't have employee turnover. I really don't. You know, I, for whatever I, reason, I don't know why, they stay. Because <laughs> you're a likable guy. No, I don't think that's Get the it. job done. <laughs> I pay him so, enough, maybe. <laughs> right, there you go. So um, in, in closing, um, you know, we never really found out, like, how did you start these organizations. So if you can give me a, a brief little, uh, uh, you know, how you started each business, let me know a little bit about that because I don't think we really got into that. I don't think people get it. They just don't. You know what it comes down to, Mike? I just love business. Like you, I love awesome. business. Business is one of those things that when you're not a great basketball player, you got to look to something else. You you know you're good at it. You didn't make it here, you made it there. That's my calling. It's my purpose. It's 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 what I like to do. And people go, well, how do you run a retail business and successfully run a manufacturing business? And then what the heck's a digital media business? It's not about that. What it is, it's about a passion. It's about a need that a lot of my customers were reaching out for. And you know, if I didn't say it. Five seconds ago, it's about the people. If I can employ people, I think it's a great thing. When I think you have your senior most, as we all do, right? I was most likely to succeed. I had some big shoes to fill. 
I had some big shoes. And when your grandmother tells you you're going to be rich and your mom says you're going to be good in business, that's the only reason why I did it, Mike. Rich and good in business, you have to do it. (laughs) I'm still working on those. (laughs) Well, Greg, thank you very much for your time. I really appreciate you coming out and spending some time with me and and giving our our listeners some good insight to business. Um, Thank you very much. I appreciate it. And Mike, congratulations on Comstocks. Thank you. I heard they made you look great. Great. <laughs> hey, real quick, how can people uh, reach you, um, you know, uh, one of your locations? What's the uh, website? Well, here's here's probably the best thing to do. If you want to learn about the crazy ways of Greg Bauer, just go to www. I don't even know why I say that. Bauer360.com. That's B-A-U-E-R 360.com. It has our businesses, and from there you can link out to any of them. Perfect. Uh, Mike, thanks, man. I had a blast. Thank you. I appreciate it. This is Brought In On Business on Money 2.0, sponsored by Blanket Marketing. It's all the rage. Everyone's doing it. Social media. You want to make it in today's market? You got to have a social media strategy. What is social media? Hey, I'm Michael Broughton, President and CEO of Blanket Marketing Group. If you heard it once, you've heard it a thousand times. In today's fast-paced business world, you aren't in it if you don't have a social media strategy. My company is a full-service digital marketing advertising agency based out of Sacramento, California. With years of delivering professional marketing strategies, we can bring your business to the forefront of your industry. Our motto is, relax. We've got you covered. Give me a call at 329-8600 and let's set up a time to talk about your business strategy. Also, listen to my show every Thursday, 10 a.m. on 105.5. That's Broughton on Business, 10 a.m. every Thursday on 105.5. Welcome back to Broughton on Business. Uh, We had a great show today and we're coming to a close. And I just want to thank Greg Bauer, uh, president of Bauer 360, Rack and Road, and Park and Bike. Um, sales for sales sake. Uh, he had some great uh, information in regards to being a profitable business and not just looking at the sale. Having Christina Calvin on, editor of, Sac- of, of Comstock's magazine. She's done a phenomenal job talking about where the magazine is going. Really appreciate that. And I'm Michael Broughton. This is Broughton on Business. And please tune in as we talk to more entrepreneurs. Uh, in the region about what they're doing and the influence of marketing. Thank you. This is Broughton on Business on Money 2.0, sponsored by Blanket Marketing.